Welcome to the More Than OK podcast, a wellbeing and family podcast about tips, strategies and stories on how to be more than OK. My name is Belinda Bray. I'm a mum, a wife, a teacher and someone who's always trying to be more than OK. I love learning about wellness and wellbeing and I love bringing what I learn into my life, my family and my classroom. So I hope what I have for you today is helpful and inspires you to be more than OK. Welcome to another episode of More Than OK. Today we are talking about books for teens and I've brought in a teen. So this is my daughter Annika. Welcome to the show. Mm, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Excellent. So I've got Annika to bring in some books for preteens and some books for teens. So we're going to talk all about books. But let's find out a bit about you first. Uh, and this is a question I ask every guest. So how do you have your coffee? I am not a coffee drinker. It's I like very tea. sad. But she's good at making coffee. She does make them on demand, which is great. <laughs> okay, next question is, what do you like to do on Saturday mornings? Um, I like to get up early to go for runs, and then I like to read. Yes, that is true. Uh, and last question, if you could meet any author, dead or alive, and have dinner with them, who would it be? That is a difficult question, but a good one. Um, I think it would have to be Anne Frank. Anne Frank. Oh, that's so nice. You were not a big reader. I was not. So we actually struggled for a little while with getting you to read books. Now we struggle getting her to stop reading books. <laughs> that is correct. So what changed? Um, I think I needed to find what I was interested in. When I was kind of in lower primary school, I, didn't, I couldn't find books that I really liked and they didn't really interest me. So it kind of took me a while to figure out what books I was interested in, find a niche or a genre, and then I started working from there. And then I became interested in more and enjoyed it more. Cool. So what would be the first book that really captured your imagination? Do you remember? I do. It was <laughs> Geronimo Stilton. Oh, yes. The books about the mouse yeah. and the cheese. Yes. Yeah, that's cool. So you liked the adventure of those books. I did like the adventure of those books. But then as my reading taste matured, I really like fantasy and dystopian now. Okay, great. Okay, so you have brought some books in with you. I'm a little bit proud because some of these are my books. So we're hitting the point where my kids are reading books I love, which, I, which is great. Okay, let's start with our preteen books. So what age group is this for? I would say nine to 12 year olds. Okay, so nine year olds who are advanced readers, yeah. up to 12 year olds. All right, where do you want to start? Um, I'd love to start with Wonder. Oh, tell me why you love this book. Um, so Wonder you is the story of a boy who has a disorder where his face looks a bit different and he has a few health related issues. And it's the story of him starting going to a real school when he's been homeschooled for his whole life. And what I love about it is it's a story about how he and his family adapt to that, how he makes friends, and how people learn to accept him, and how he learns that he, there's so much more to him, and people see past all of his failures. Yeah. That he sees as failures. Yeah, it's a great book. Really loved it. Really loved it. Good book, good choice. Yes, I yes. agree, I approve. Okay, which book do you want to re look at next? Um, the Hobbit. Okay. So The Hobbit is by Tolkien. And it is considered a classic, one of yes. the books you have to read at some point in your life. And it is the story of a hobbit named Bilbo Baggins. And he gets taken away on an adventure yes. to kind of discover himself and make some friendships along the way. Now, we've actually also listened to this as an audio book. We have. So earlier in the year, we went to New Zealand. And as we drove around, we listened to The Hobbit. So what did you think about listening to this as a book? Um... I like listening to books, not as much as I enjoy reading it, but it was interesting because you get to hear different character voices and it's almost a different experience to hear it as opposed yeah. to read it. Yeah, do, yeah but it's, it's a good way to he, um, enjoy a classic, to be able to yeah. listen to it. So it's just another way to make a classic a bit more accessible, don't yes. you think? All right, what will we look at next? Um, let's work down. So okay. Artemis Fowl. I have not read this book. So Artemis Fowl is the name of the main character and he's actually a villain, which really? is interesting. So Artemis Fowl is a child genius. He's 12 years old 
and he's made it his mission to discover and prove that fairy people exist. Oh. So it's very fantastical. It's set in the real world, but you have fairies and stuff. And it's the story of how Artemis realizes he doesn't have to follow in his father's footsteps mm -hmm. and become a villain. Good. Where he actually, over the series, learns to be good. Cool. Now, do you like single standalone books or series? I love series. Yeah. My favorite is trilogies because they're the perfect length. Three books. Three books. Is the perfect length. If it gets too much further, they kind of can get a bit repetitive or. Okay. So I like trilogies. Cool. Do you remember where you got this book? Um, I've actually collected the whole series from op shops. Isn't that cool? It's very cool. I find op shops are a great place to find books. Yeah. You are not necessarily a library borrower. <laughs> no. We have in the past had to go and buy a book that you've read in the library because you want it on your shelf. Yes. Yes. So op shops are a great option for us. Yes. Yeah. Good. All right. Oh, yay. This one. The seri a series of unfortunate events. This series thoroughly entertained me. It is so cleverly written. This is one of the series that is over three books that I enjoyed. Oh, this so has 13. 13 books, <laughs> which is clever because it's an unlucky number. Yes. And so this is the story of three children who are orphaned. Mm -hmm. And it's their adventure as they try and get through this world where nothing's really going for them, but they somehow manage to maintain hope and friendship and they make friends along the way. Yeah, that's good. Now, this is also an excellent TV series. We loved it, didn't we? We loved it so much. We did. We've often said, we need another series of unfortunate events. But it was just a really great family viewing. And they stick fairly closely to the books, they don't they? They do. I was very impressed. Yeah. The movie, mm, mm -hmm. we didn't like it as much. So no. <laughs> <laughs> we recommend the series. It was really fun. Yeah. So something that could be fun is reading these. And as you go, you can watch the TV ah. series and see how they line up and kind of get a bigger understanding of either the series or the books. Yeah, good. Ah, nice. Good tip. Oh, yes. This, I feel, this is one I made Annika put on her list. <laughs> so this was probably the first book series I read after my Geronimo Stilton inspiration. Yeah. So I read this when I was in year three, um, which was very young. It is but very young. <laughs> Um, this is actually by a Christian author. C.S. Lewis wrote this as a bit of a parallel to the Christian faith, which is very clever and very interesting. There's lots of main characters throughout it, but it's kind of the story of Jesus and then all these other interesting yeah. stories woven in together. Yeah. Which is your favourite? Um, my favourite one was probably The Voyage of the Dawn Trail. <gasps> That's mine too. Which is book four or five. I can't remember. Um, and yeah, it was my favourite. It was a bit of an adventure. It was a bit more light-hearted. Some good characters in that one. Yeah, good. Yeah. I loved the paintings and the visuals. Yes. I really liked that in that book. The storytelling in this is so clever. Yeah, very cool. Okay, so these are books that you've recommended for up to 12-year-olds. Up to 12-year-olds. Of course, older kids can read them as well. Yes. If you haven't, I would recommend. Well, I've gone back and read these as an adult just because it's they're such great reads and they just bring back a lot of memories. Yeah. So I bought this book in London. So I look at it and think, oh, I love that about books. You're holding memories. Yeah. So we like books at our house. All right. Now let's move on to teen books. Teen books. So what age group would you say these ones are for? I'd say 12 plus, probably about 12 to 16. Okay. Yeah. Great. Who, what do you want to start with? I'm going to go with Anne Frank. So Anne Frank is the author I said I would like to meet. Yes. Um, and so she wrote this when she was 15 years old, so my age. Yes. And it's set during World War II. It's actually her diary, so it's a true story. And um, she kind of just writes about being stuck in their little annex for two years as they're hiding from the Nazis. And it's really, it's really good insight into her life. And I relate to her in some of her yeah. entries and the way she thinks. Yeah, it's a great book. It's a really great book. And it's actually a school text, is that right? Yes, some schools do do it as a yeah, so But it's a really important book, I think. Yeah. Any books that teach, um, teach you about how to be better and how to embrace humanity, they've got to be good. Yeah. Another oh. World War II book, <laughs> The Book Thief. This is another iconic book that people would probably say you have to read at some point. 
And so this is the story of a young girl named Liesel who lives in a village in Germany. And it's kind of the story of what happens on her street. So how they deal with the Nazi propaganda yeah. and how she grows up. And what I loved about it was the importance of books in a society. Ah, yes. So she's kind of finding hope in all these books she finds and steals. It's really good, really clever storytelling, really great plot. Yeah, and Marcus Zusak is Australian. He is. Yeah, and so he's written loads of books and they're all completely different. So he's such a clever author, but this is good. And you didn't give the whole plot twist away. No. About when you read this book, it's hard to pick who the narrator is. But it is very clever when you figure so it out. So clever, so clever. And there's a movie, which we have at home, but we haven't watched. <laughs> uh, I've seen it, but the aim is to watch that together. Yeah. So do you like to read the book or watch the movie first? <laughs> I already know the answer, but you can tell people. <laughs> My law is you have to read the book first, always. So if I see movies coming out in the cinemas that I want to watch, I will go and find the book and I will read it. And that occasionally ruins the movie because, in my opinion, <laughs> the movie is never as good as the book. But Why do you think that is? I think it's because in books, the books are the more original idea when it's based off that thing. In books, you have a lot more room for descriptive texts. Yeah. And it's very different to format a novel than it is to format a movie script. And the storytelling is different and what movie viewers want is different to what readers want. Do you also book. think also it takes you a few days or it might, well, normal people, <laughs> it might take a few weeks to get through a book that thick. Whereas a movie, you just watch it and you've watched it in two hours. Yeah. But a book, you kind of actually have to invest your time in. Do you think that makes it? I think that definitely contributes to it as well. Yeah, that's good. Yes, highly yes. recommend this highly book. Highly recommend. Okay. Um, before we get on to this one, can you tell me about how Highlands has helped you with your reading? So Highlands has an amazing library and an amazing library staff and everyone there really puts into people's reading and encourages you to read but one of my favourite things is we actually started a book club this year and so I was part of the driving force for that. That's good. Um, so I did, we did this competition called the Reader's Cup competition. And so you read books and then we went to a competition where you asked questions and like it was kind of who could pick up the most information, comprehension style thing. And so me and my friends were like, we want a book club. And so we started one and that's really helped. So there's people there from grade seven all the way up to grade 12 and we just come together one lunchtime a week and we talk about books and we get to recommend books and um, what a great thing what a great thing yeah well I'm also in book clubs i am found myself in two so I've been in a book club that's been going for over 10 years Wow. where we some of these books have come out of that so we've read the book thief and we've read wonder as a book club um, and there's also a book club that is um, made up of Highlands staff. So we all get together and we all share books and there's a bookcase down in our staff room where people leave books and other people can come and read them. And it's being in love with reading, it just opens up a whole other world to you and a whole other experience and it's actually really good for you. Yeah, so I think if you're getting into reading, I think a really great way to keep it up with reading and find new books is to get together with some friends and discuss books, recommend books to each other. It doesn't need to be super formal, but getting together and geeking out about books Yes, I have some issues with some of your friends who recommend lots of books that we have to then go and get. Go and get. <laughs> but it's lovely. It's lovely to see that love of literature and the love of books. Do you ever yes. want to write a book? Um, I do. One day, I'd really love to. I've, I've sat down and started a few, but it's actually quite hard to write a book, so it's kind of broadened my appreciation of people who can write and publish books. Yeah, that's good. I'd love to write a book too, so maybe one day we'll both be published. Yeah, that'd be <laughs> awesome. All right, now I have saved your current favourite author till last. Yes. Do you want to tell us about this book or this um, series? So this is Weapon, and this is, this is the second book in the series. It's a duology, and so it's written by an Australian author. Her name is Lynette Nonny. She actually lives on the Sunshine Coast, and I've met her. We have. I've driven her and your friends to a book signing. 
<laughs> and she's a really great author because she's also Christian. Oh, and good. so it doesn't, you can kind of see the parallels throughout the books, but it's not explicitly Christian. But the good thing is there's none of the things you don't want in a book. Like it's clean, the plot is good. It can be a bit dark, but it's not inappropriate. Okay. So, so what's the first one called? The first one in this series is called Whisper. Okay. And so this one is my favourite one of her books. So it's about these people who have special abilities where they can speak things into being. Oh. So you have different powers and it, it all comes through your voice. So it's really interesting because it's about the power of your voice and how one, I think the slogan of the first book is one word can change the world. And it's very true. And the character building's excellent. The, the character arcs are really good of how they kind of, um, the main character comes to accept herself and deal with her past traumas and make brilliant friendships. Ah, that's cool. I haven't read those. I think you should. Okay. I think you'd really enjoy them. Now, I read um, on my Kindle, so I like to read digitally. You've read digitally and, what do we call this, analogue? Yes. Which do you prefer? I prefer analogue. I like the smell of books. Oh, I like yes. the feel of books. And it's just nice to get off the screen. True, all that the time. is true. I like to read, I have a, the Kindle app on my phone. Um, I don't, there are times in the school year where I don't sleep very much. So I'm often awake through the night and I would rather read than just toss and turn. So reading on my phone is really convenient. But yeah, but yeah. you do love a book. I do love a good, hard, real book. Yes. <laughs> we have found that's a good way to, um, to co give Annika consequences is take her books. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming in. Uh, it's so great to have you come on and tell us what books are great for teens. Uh, so if you have got holidays coming up or birthdays or Christmas, books are great gifts. And we hope that you have um, got some new titles that you can look into. Uh, if, the, if you have any book recommendations for teens, we'd love to hear about it. You can leave it in the comments. And we'll see you for another episode of More Than OK soon.